story. Amen. It would take quite a while. And I was just thinking about that. When we're all gathered yes. in heaven. Amen. We make the rounds and we talk to one another and we share the story. Amen. Of how God worked in our lives and how we made it to walk on golden streets. That's going to take an eternity. Amen. Snacking on all the goodies that was left over from that. Amen. We all had a great time. Amen. Why don't you move around and shake hands with somebody? Amen. Greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let them know that you're glad they're here. Glad they're part of the church. How are you doing? <laughs> Oh, you know, 
Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad the Lord let me go straight through almost ignorance, to total ignorance, to the truth. I didn't have to go around and get all confused about how many gods there were involved in all this. It was just one of them. I'm so thankful that he got a hold of me, don't you? So I was seen with me. Well, it was at a revival that the Lord was speaking.
Granddaughter Ariel, she has COVID. Remember her. Sister Virginia, let's remember to pray for her. Um, my dad Roger is having like dizzy spells and fell, and um, he just needs the Holy Ghost to the healing thing. Come down and get the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen.
And the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, hallelujah, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Hallelujah. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare, snare of the fowl of Satan, and from the noisome pestilence and contagion of sin. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Yes. Thou shalt not be afraid of the, air, or the terror of night, nor of the arrow that flieth by day, yes. nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, yes. which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Yes. Thy there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. I want to add to that one more setting of scripture if you would turn back with me to Exodus chapter number 33. And I'm going to read from verse number 7. Exodus chapter 33, verse number 7. Praise the Lord. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp afar off from the camp and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I might as well give you a title right here because uh, uh, reading about he that dwell in the secret place of the most high God shall <coughs> dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. What else would you title that except the secret place of God? Yes. yes. The Lord, there's Amen. nothing else to call it. Um, so, um, I got some things on my mind this morning. Uh, 
I hope that makes sense to you. I don't know if we'll shout, scream, and holler. Maybe we will. Or maybe we'll just talk. I don't know. Whatever pleases God. I think that's what everybody wants to do here. Is yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if we can walk in His favor and feel His anointing this morning, then something will definitely be accomplished in yes. our hearts. Praise, Praise, the, Lord. Praise the Lord. So, in the secret place of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your blessings. My Lord, thank you for your mercy. Help us to reflect it in our lives, God. Thank you for your grace. Jesus, help us to walk in the never part of the grace of God. My Lord, thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Thank God that we are covered with it this morning. The devil can find nothing to accuse us with. Because it is under the blood of praise God, there is no power that can bring sin out from under the blood of the Lord. The blood of the Lamb, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for truth. And my Lord, teach us to love and praise God. Thank you for the revelations that you have given unto us, Lord. We rejoice in those things, Jesus. Hallelujah. My Lord, we praise you and call you holy this morning. We can feel your spirit and presence in this place, and for that we are most thankful. We are humbled in your sight, God, this morning, Lord, because, Jesus, we are absolutely astounded that mere flesh can stand in the awesome presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My Lord, we feel you touch. God, one day in your courts is better than the practice of I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. Oh, Oh, I 
cousins, but I had a lot of cousins, still do. But uh, when the cousins came over, we would normally get out at the barn in those blessed days before cell phones and internet and iPads <laughs> and yes. video games. When you had to use your imagination to right. come up with something to entertain you. Right. Um, we would choose up sides and we'd get out to the barn and we would have a war. Yeah. <laughs> not, not because we were mad at each other, we just, it was a game. We were playing. The ammunition we used was corn cobs. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and when you got, I'm serious. <laughs> when you got pigs and cows and horses and chickens and goats and ducks, you got a lot of corn cobs. So we never ran out the we never ran out of ammunition. Uh, you could throw as hard as you wanted to. The only rule was you could not use those corn cobs that were soaked in mud. <laughs> That's the only thing that was off limits, but uh, uh, yeah, big old hay bar. You know, I probably was 60 years old before I ever realized how blessed I was to yes. be raised on a farm. Yes. I, probably, I never realized that until I, I didn't count that cotton patch as a major blessing in my life at the time. But looking back, at the, it just it, it was just a wonderful place. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Sometimes we'd sneak out to that old barn at night uh, and with the light of a, an old, kind of unpredictable light, of an old carbide light, we'd take our BB guns and and we would spotlight the sparrows that were roosted on the rafters of that barn. And uh, you may be an animal rights advocate, I don't know, but we shot those sparrows. That's what we would do. They didn't go to waste. Uh, we fed them to Archie. Archie was a cat. Uh, he was one of them, and Archie had got trapped in in some steel traps and my dad was going to kill him but we kind of interceded for Archie and my daddy didn't kill him and Archie had one front leg and one back leg so he was not real good at catching anything to eat so we fed, we fed those little sparrows to Archie praise God. and he seemed like he really appreciated it. I, I can still, I still remember the sound of uh, when you uh, that BB gun when you missed and it hit that tin roof. And it was just a wonderful place. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I had a lot of fun there with, with my cousins and uh, sometimes uh, friends would come over and uh, that's that's what that's what we did. Uh, yes. we, we didn't stay in the house usually. If you stayed in the house, somebody would give you a job. We would, uh, I learned to smoke a corn cob pipe in that barn. Crazy. <laughs> <Amen. laughs> I tried my first chew of Chris tobacco in that barn and got so dizzy I couldn't walk back to the house. <laughs> was, you learned some things, you know. I mean, farms, you learned a lot on the farm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I think, folks, that uh, probably uh, the times that I enjoyed mostly in that barn was when I went there by myself. It had a big old hayloft that it had a ladder on the front and in, in the middle of the barn. Inside there was a ladder, one on the back, and uh, you know what they look like. And we just climbed up into that barn and that loft, especially. And it became, the, 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 the times that I think I remember most are the times that there, I was there by myself all along. And it kind of became my secret place. And I think everybody, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about, because you probably had a secret place also. And uh, I, I remember, uh, you know, I could be uh, really concerned that I might not make the starting lineup of our little league baseball team. And I really wanted to make it. I, I wanted to make the starting lineup. When I was 
in the fifth grade, I, I, I played baseball and uh, I was really concerned that I might not be good enough to be on that baseball team. But when I got in that secret place, everything changed. Now, there, there, were, there were pictures, and I, I would not admit this at the time, but I can now. There were pictures that I was scared to death of. And especially one that was left-handed. Because it just looked so awkward to me, I just knew he was going to kill me. And the coach had always, James, stand a little bit closer to the plate. I kind of wanted to back up away from it a little bit, but... This this one this one guy his name was Raymond and he could throw real hard and he'd already hit me once. <laughs> he was playing ball and oh, he man he paid me good and I, I was afraid of him and uh, needless to say I didn't get too many hits off of Raymond. I was just trying to stay out of the way all the other time but but in, in that secret place when I, when I got by myself it was not like that. It seemed like I didn't have any fears at all. All the fears went away. Yes. And I could stand there and go rain and throw the ball. And he would throw a hard fastball, and I could tell that it was going to just come over the outside of the plate. I swung hard as I could. I felt the shock of the bat when it hit that ball and connected. I heard the crack. And I seen that ball go over the head of the left fielder and land in Monk Chesney's cow Hallelujah. Now, it never happened literally. But when I got in that secret place, things was different. Praise God. Hallelujah. There was, I, I never had a lot of problems. There, there, there were kids in school. There, there were older boys especially. Oh, oh, my Lord, the pressures of 11-year-old. Can you imagine? <laughs> there, there were older boys that were in school, and I was intimidated by them. They were older. They were bigger than me. And back that time, you know, I mean, a, a, a year's difference seemed like a whole lot. Uh, anyway, there were bullies in the school, and we would be outside playing basketball, and we, we didn't have a gym, we just had an out, outdoor court, and, and it was just dirt, uh, but it had a goal, and that's all we needed, uh, and we had a ball, praise the Lord. But, but there, were, there, were, there were those guys that it seemed like two or three of them would be together, and, and they, they just come out and then just take the ball away from you and shove you out of the way if you said anything. And uh, the basketball game, as far as we were concerned, was over. And I was in kid today. Matter of fact, I scared of them. Uh, I knew that, uh, that there was no way that I could take on one of them, uh, especially three of them. And uh, uh, you understand. Uh, you've probably been through all of that. But uh, when I got in the secret place, everything changed. It was different there. Uh, I, I could see um, the old Arvis Bell walking up to me and grabbing the ball, but oh, uh, that might have happened that day on the ball court, but when I got in my secret place, it was different. Uh, as, soon as, he, uh, uh, as soon as he grabbed the ball, he got, a, he got the surprise of his life. Uh, I caught him in the belly with a hard right hand, and then my... My left hook landed solidly on his chin. Oh. And then I threw an overhand right and popped him right in the nose. <laughs> Blood started streaming. He grabbed his nose, started calling for his mother, and took off for the bathroom. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and that's, that's the way it happens. It, that there was, I had no fear in that place. Yeah. I had perfect confidence of uh, I was safe, and I knew I was safe. Uh, secret place. It, it was that way in secret places. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now, 
But sometimes uh, we get an idea that, that, a, that a secret place is just a childhood thing. That it's just something that kids do. It's just for kids. Uh, but uh, but we, we outgrow that when we become adults. The time comes when, when we're going to we're going, we're, we're going to outgrow our ball gloves and um, uh, the time comes when school is left behind us. And I, I don't know what girls do now, but back then they played with dolls and they had little doll houses. And, but the time comes when we, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't do those things anymore. We, we have uh, we've outgrown those. I don't know why the world people got to grow up. Praise God. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> some of them never do, but <laughs> anyway, back, um, we get past that, and we get an idea that we no longer need secret places that we can retreat into. But I want to tell you something, folks. When you become an adult, especially in this world that we're living in right now, those secret places are very important to come yeah. with you. And I think I need them in my life more right now than I ever had before. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. There, there are places that I go along. I still do that. And probably you do too. There are places that I don't invite anybody to go with me. I go by myself. Nobody else goes. Ruth and I have traveled a lot. We've been all over the place. Hallelujah. In the 49 years that we've been there, and almost that, we have traveled to a lot of different places. But there is a place where my wife has never been with me. And I hope she understands what I'm talking about right now. She has never gone there. I always go there alone. It's too personal. And it's far too private. And nobody goes there. Jesus understands it. Because Jesus said for Matthew 6, verse number 6, to go into a closet. And he said, when you get in that closet, shut the door. Amen. And he said, what you talk to me about in secret. He used the word pray, but that's talking to God. What you talk to me about in secret. Yes. The things that you ask for, I will do that. I will do those things and everybody will know. I'll do it openly. She talked to me in secret. So if you folks don't know what I'm getting at this morning, Jesus does. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Been there a lot of times. Matter of fact, kind of debated wrong whether to tell you this or not. But I found myself one day back in the area of the old farm where I grew up. I was a grown man, pastoring actually in Tennessee. Benji was with me. He's about 14 years old. And I was close enough that I just felt like I, I couldn't, I, I had to go down there. So we drove down the old gravel road and I noticed that the old farmhouse was gone but the barn was still there. It looked just like it did. It was still standing. So I told Benji because I knew down the road there was a place that he could turn around. He was just starting to drive and very eager. He didn't have a license but he's eager to drive so I told Benji, I said, hey Benji, take the truck and I didn't have to explain anything. As long as he didn't get to drive, he was happy. I said, you, there's a place down the road down here that you can turn around. You take the truck and go down there and turn around. I'm going to go over here and see about something in this barn. 
So I went over there, and he took off down the road, and I climbed up that old ladder and went back up into that old loft. I had been there in years. It smelled just like it always did. It looked just like it always did. And for just a few minutes, I was back in that old secret place that I had when I was just a child. Now, by that time, I had many other, or I had other secret places that, or maybe just one that I went to. Uh, nobody went there with me. I was all alone, and uh, I enjoyed doing that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, one day, one day, I went in, not, not the bar, I'm not talking about the pay bar, but one day, I went into this secret place where nobody else goes with me, one day I went there and no sooner had I got into that spiritual secret place that I realized that I was not alone. That somebody else was there. Matter of fact, somebody else was already there. When I got there, there already was a, a, a presence that was in that, my secret place. Uh, uh, and oddly enough, I did not resent that. Uh, now, this is my place. It's private. It's personal. Nobody else comes here with me, and nor do I want them to. But for some reason, I was not resentful that I was feeling, uh, I was feeling a present. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Um, he talked to me about my sin. He did. He didn't, he didn't belittle me because of the sin that was in my life. He didn't rub me down. He didn't, he didn't point a finger and accuse me of the sinful lifestyle I was, I was living. None of that happened. But he just talked to me about it and let me know that there was a better way to live. Right. Yeah. That there were things that I was missing out on. What's your fears are, what's your 
didn't tell Ruth that either. But I began to repent. I, I, you know, I'm talking about something a long time ago. She thought I repented, I guess, when I went to the altar that night. I, I already was repenting. God began to deal with me in a secret place. Praise the Lord. I didn't tell anybody about it. But I repented every morning when I got up. I repented at noon time. And I repented at night when I went to bed. Praise God. Amen. I might not have been using words. I didn't want anybody to hear me. But I was talking to God. Amen. And when I got in that altar, finally I got enough nerve to go to the altar. I already was repenting. Praise God. It had been going on for a long time. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus has got so much to offer. Jesus has got so much to give. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know how people get the idea. Believe in the devil, I suppose. I don't know how people get the idea that he's so mean and it's so hard to live for God. If it seems to you like that the Spirit of the Lord is pressing you a little bit, it's because he is so intent on giving you good things. He has got, he's got the blessings and he wants to give it to you so bad. He has got the, the, the forgiveness and he wants to answer the prayer.
If you don't know God, you can't feel Him. Hallelujah. If you remain faithful to the house of the Lord, one of these days you're going to come into a, a place, a secret place. Hallelujah. And there's going to be a spirit in that place. And it's going to get hold of your heart. He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom will I trust. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the 2 Corinthians 4, verse 15, the Bible says, listen to this, all things are done. For your sakes. Right. Oh, if that ain't a love letter, what well, is? All things are done for your sakes. Thank you, Jesus. That the abundant grace Hallelujah. might through the thanks of me redound to the glory of God. Yes. yes. It's an odd word that's used there. I didn't mispronounce it. It's renowned. R E D O U N D. That it means to have effect for the glory of God. For this cause, hallelujah, we faint not. Thank you, Thank you. The outward man perishes, but the inward man is renewed day to day. In a secret place. There's a lot of mention about it in Scripture. From Psalms 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart. I put the word in a secret place. It's in my heart. Yeah. That uh, I might not sin against you. Yes, Lord. Yes. A secret place. Yes. I need to visit it often. Maybe I need to make a correction there. Because the Bible says it is a habitation. Right. If it is a habitation, it is a place where I live. Praise God. I need to be in that secret place. It's the environment that, that I live in. It's a habitation. It's a climate, praise the Lord, uh, of, of where I live. The Spirit of the Lord is that environment and, and that habitation and it's, it's the spirit of God is, is the climate that I live in. You understand? And, uh, I feel like I'm saying things that you don't know, you know, understand what I'm trying to say. But that's, that's what I long to be in. Praise yeah, the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I am at home here in the presence of God. Yeah, that's all true. Right. There was a time in the presence of the Lord to scare to death, but it's not like that anymore. Scares me to death if I cannot feel the presence of the Lord but in this atmosphere that's supercharged with the Holy Ghost. So, hallelujah. That's, that's what we're at home. That's what we're at home in because it's in our heart that we're saying there, there is no place like home. And I know exactly, I know exactly what we're talking about. I left home when I was 18 years old and I thought I was living it up and having a good time, so I was. But when I went back home, there was something about pulling up into that driveway, walking across that porch, hearing the slam of that street door, smelling the food that my mom was cooking, sat down in the favorite chair, sleeping in my bed. There was something in that that you can't find anywhere else. And there is something in the presence of God. There is something right in His presence. It is our home.
to my head, gluing it on my face, put marks on me with a green pencil. I didn't look into the mirror until the next morning. And it was good that I didn't. If I looked into the mirror, I would never have gone. It scared me. Hallelujah. She said, you can get into bed now. And I said, I don't think I can walk. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> but I am comfortable in the presence of the Lord. I'm safe in my secret place. I am comfortable there. I have faith there. I'm not scared of anything. Nothing. There's no storm that touches me in that place. It, it rage outside. But it never touches me in a secret place. Amen. There's no harm. There's no hurt that can be done to me. Even Satan himself can't. He can't even do nothing with me as long as I'm in that secret place. I know I have that was in the city of Hebron. I am safe. It was a city of refuge, praise God. And I'm safe when I am in that city. The only harm that can ever come to me is if I ever step out of it. And I am determined. To stay in this place where he first convicted me of my sin. Where he first touched me with his spirit. Where he gave me the Holy Ghost. Where he called me to preach. Where he answered my prayer. Where he blessed my children. Where he touched my wife. Where he has given us everything that we have needed. He supplied all of our needs. Where he has given us great friends. And great family that love us. And pray for us. Hallelujah. I don't know what it is. the 
tabernacle of the congregation. They sought God. So that's where that's where they went. They watched. Moses went there. And when Moses went inside, that pillar of cloud came down, and the Lord, the Bible says, talked with Moses. I wonder about, you know, sometimes we try to figure some things out that it's really pretty simple. And I wonder, why did he put it outside the camp? Why did he put it so far outside the camp? This is Moses that put this thing up. It was basically just a tent. But why did he do that? It's a tent of the meeting. And, you know, it, it's a secret place. They went there by themselves. They, and they sought the Lord. And, uh, why? Why so far? So, I'm trying to figure all this out. You know, well, maybe it's because the Lord wants us to put a little effort into saving him. So, he puts it three quarters of a mile away, and, and you have to go out there. You know what? The simple answer is, I think it's simply this. That the people that sought the Lord that went into that tent of meeting, not a meeting tent like we're having a brush or a meeting a revival and you got to be on the congregation. No, it, it's, it's, it's a secret place. You go on there and talk to God. It's just going to be the two of you. And you are talking to the Lord, but why did he put it so far away? And it's suddenly gone on it. Well, it's really, really simple. Maybe I've got something to say to the Lord that is so private that I don't want anybody else to hear it. Right, God. Amen. And it was in the middle of the camp then I might have a problem with that. Maybe I've got a sin that I need to talk to God about and I don't want anybody to know it except Him. So He puts it three quarters of a mile away. You know what? I could scream out my frustration in that tent of meeting, in that secret place. I don't have to be quiet about it. Right. You've been so frustrated you just wanted to yell. Yeah. <laughs> I can scream that frustration out in that tent of meeting. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not. We're winding down, I can tell, but I'm fixing to stop here. Yes. And in that secret place, when my frustration comes out, he will encourage me. Yes. Amen. Yes. I can tell him how, how upset and discouraged I am. And I can say it as loud as I want to. Right. And nobody's going to hear me except God. Amen. And when I do that, he's going to comfort me. Amen. I can mourn all I want to in that place, in that secret place. But he is my buckler and my shield and the lifter of my head. Yes. Praise man. Hallelujah. I can tell him about my trouble. Yes, yes. A line from a song. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Yes. Tell him all about our yes. trouble. Oh, my Lord. And I know that you've done it as well as I have. I have done that when it was not a song. Tell him all the troubles I got. And in that secret place, he will remind that he is a very present help in a time of trouble. Yeah. Right. Praise God. Yeah. I can confess my sins and he will forgive me yes. in that secret place. I can tell him how much I love him. He will embrace me yes. in that secret place. Praise God. I'm talking about the secret place of God. Oh, Lord. If you don't have one, you need to get one. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. need to go there. As a matter of fact, you just need to move in and live yeah. there. Amen. No problem can touch you there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Angels don't even go into that secret place. You know that? It's a place that's reserved just for you and God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Angels have not even been there. Not in the presence like that. They never had to ask for forgiveness. Praise God. They've never been down and had to be lifted up. They are created beings to worship the Lord. Praise God. But we worship the Lord because we want to. And because He has been so good to 
us. Hallelujah. In Psalms 27, verse number 5, I'm going to stop with this. David said, Hide me. Hallelujah. In thy temple. Yes, Lord. And in thy secret tabernacle. Hide me. Let's stand and worship the Lord. Talking about a secret place with God. I need it much more now than I did when I was just a kid. Matter of fact, maybe those childhood games, maybe they taught us something. That there is a place. God, I know. If I can just get in the presence of God, I'm going to be all right. Why don't y'all go ahead and sing, and why don't we just lift up the name of Jesus? Why don't we just go over by and out here for just a few minutes? You know, you can go into a secret place right in the midst of all kinds of company. I've done it in airports. Praise God. In all kinds of different places. You can just get into the atmosphere of the Holy Ghost. You know, you don't even have to be in church. You, you can do it wherever you're at. Certainly here this morning. Praise God. Let's, 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 let's love him. Let's exalt his name. Let's invite him. Praise the Lord. Jesus touch my heart, God. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to me. Oh, Lord. Thank you for understanding me, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. But it would have been people that would have certainly looked down on me, God. Say, you know what? You got exactly what you deserve. You know what? Jesus ain't never come to that. Never has. When I messed up and got into some crazy situation, he was always willing to help me get out. All I had to do, matter of fact, I got into some situations that only God could get me out. All I had to do was to get in his presence and praise God.
chose not in the will of God. And every time I went into my secret place, Jesus would talk to me about it. I was nervous about leaving. It was in that time that jobs were very hard to get, and I had a real good one. I also knew I was not in the will of God. I was working a night shift for work. I took care of locomotives. I had three of those locomotives that were coupled together, and I was putting some fuel on them. The train crew was in the yard office, and they were waiting for me. The train was sitting right there on the main line. All they needed to do as soon as I got through cash them up was to come and get them. Everything, was, everything else was uh, good to go. They were the biggest engines that were built at that time. 3,000 horsepower. So all three of them together had 9,000 horsepower. Big engines. Six, six wheels in the front, six in the back, and all that stuff. I was backing the engines up. And in railroad terminology, I split a switch. There are switches, you know what a switch does, it puts you on a different track. But there's some of them are spring loaded. And you can run through them one way, but you can't come back. Because what will happen is, it will try, it will make one engine try to go in on this track, and this engine's on this track. It's not a good situation. That's exactly what happened. I derailed three, two of those engines. Two of them. The only one that's still on the rail was the one I was in, the front one. Called the yard office and told them what had happened. They were not happy. Um, the engine sitting on the ground. The one in the engine in, in the rear was about probably 10 feet from the rail. And to re-rail the engine, they got this huge crane that will literally pick pick the end of the engine, those engines weighed about close to a million pounds. I decided that I need to go into my secret place. That night it happened to be a boxcar. I climbed up in that old boxcar, it was empty, there was nobody there. Just me and the Lord. And I talked to Jesus about it. And I told him, if you help me with these engines, then I'll leave this job. All you have to do is say when, and I'll call. Just tell me where I need to go. So I went back and got into the engines that I had tried to uncouple. There's too much pressure they wouldn't uncouple. I found a piece of a four before that's about that long. And I laid that four before, propped it up against the rail. I got back in the lead engine, put it in forward, gave it a little gas, and it started moving just a few inches. When it moved, the two inches behind me moved. When that first engine behind me came to that four before, it went right over it. Back onto the rail. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When the third engine got there, it jumped over it. I don't know how it's even still anything but splinters by this time. It jumped over it, came back, right back up on the rail. Thank you, Jesus. I called the yard office. I said, Is that train crew still here? They said, Yeah, but they're getting their coats on. They're leaving. I said, well, tell them I got these engines ready. Well, I thought they were on the ground. I said, they were. He said, how in the world did you get them back on the rail? I said, uh, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. <coughs> when you have been in a secret place with God, yes. when you come out of there, yes. Miracles can happen and will. You come, you spend some time in a secret place, my friend. When you come out of that place, hallelujah, you have been alone with God. Like Moses, he 
He had so much power on him when he came down off the mountain that his face shone so bright that he had to cover it up because the people were scared of him. Right? Amen. Let's get around this all Let's come rejoicing. You know, if you have a good rejoicing song, well, you just say whatever you're going to say. That'll watch you. Shining with God in a secret.